So uh, here again, uh, this is the book of Enoch. Um, the last video ended on chapter 24. Uh, and I bless the Lord of glory, the everlasting king, because he has prepared this tree for the saints, formed it, and declared that he would give it to them. 25. <clears throat> From thence I proceeded to the middle of the earth and beheld a happy and fertile spot which contained branches continually, sprouting from the trees which were planted in it. There I saw a holy mountain, and underneath it water on the eastern side, which flowed towards the south. I saw also on the east another mountain as high as that, and between them there were deep but not wide valleys. Water ran towards the mountain to the west of this, and underneath there was likewise another mountain. There was a valley, but not a wide one, below it, and in the midst of them were other deep and dry valleys towards the extremity of the three. All these valleys, which were deep but not wide, consisted of a strong rock with a tree which was planted in them. And I wondered at the rock and at the valleys, being extremely surprised. Then I said, What mean? Then I said, what means this blessed land, all these lofty trees, and the accursed valley between them? Then Uriel, one of the holy angels who was with me, replied, This valley is the accursed of the accursed forever. They shall be collected all who utter with their mouths unbecoming language against God, and speak harsh things of his glory. Here shall they be collected. Here shall be their territory. So this is reminding me of Dante's Inferno, where there are different levels of hell. 3. In the latter days, an example of judgment shall be made of them in righteousness before the saints, while those who have received mercy shall, for, shall forever, all their days, bless God, the everlasting King. And at that period of judgment shall they bless him for his mercy, as he has distributed it to them. Then I bless God, addressing myself to him, and making mention, as was meet, of his greatness. From thence I proceeded towards the east to the middle of the mountain and the desert, the level surface only which I perceived. It was full of trees of the seed alluded to, and water leaped down upon it. There appeared a cataract composed as of many cataracts, both towards the west and towards the east, Upon one side were trees, upon the other, water and dew. Then I went to another place from the desert towards the east of that mountain, which I had approached. There I beheld choice trees, particularly those which produce the sweet-smelling drugs. Sweet-smelling drugs? <laughs> Frankincense and myrrh, and trees unlike to each other. Are they talking about weed here? And over it, above them was the elevation of the eastern mountain at no great distance. All right, let's check this out. What is a drug? Drog, Drakur, Drvat, which were dried herbs, plants, or wares. A substance used to treat an illness, relieve a symptom, or modify a chemical process in the body for a specific purpose. Psychoactive substance, especially one which is illegal and addicted, ingested for recreational use, such as cocaine. Another, such as a substance, emotion or action to which one is addicted. Emotion is a drug. Inspiration is my drug. Wow. So anything such as a substance, emotion, or action. Actions are drugs to which one is addicted. That's so weird. Any commodity that, that lies on hard or is not sellable, an article of slow sale or no demand. Drugs. Drag. Drug. Drag. Drudge. Drag. And dr 
drudge. A person who works in a low salary job, someone who works for taken advantage by someone else to labor in as low servo job drudge drug drudge drug drag okay not 29 i likewise saw another place in the valleys of water which never wasted where i perceived a goodly tree which in which in smell resembled zasakinon zasakinon does the dictionary know this tree? And towards the sides of the valleys, I perceived cinnamon of a sweet odor. Over them, I advanced towards the east. Then I beheld another mountain containing trees from which water flowed like Niketro. Its name was Sarira. Its name, this mountain with trees, with water, had a name, Sarira, and Kalbaniba. And upon this mountain, I beheld another mountain, upon which were trees of Alva. These trees were full, like almond trees, and strong, and when they produced fruit, it was superior to all perfume. After these things, surveying the entrance of the north above the mountains, I perceived seven mountains replete with pure nard, odiferous trees, cinnamon, and papyrus. From thence I passed on above the summits of those mountains to some distant eastwards, and went over the Erythrian Sea. Really, Erythria, this is Aksum, this is Eritrea, this is where the um, um, Ark of the Covenant is, which is where this book comes from. Uh, more or less, but this Erythrean Sea here, Erythrean. oh man, er. Eritrean Sea. The Red Sea. Alright. Wow, they don't talk about Eritrea, but this is Eritrea. Eritrea. This is the Eritrean Sea. This is northeastern on the Red Sea, having its capital in M, formerly province for historical or colony in Italy. And Axum, Axumite, a native or inhabitant of ancient kingdom of Axum, a trading nation in the area northern Ethiopia and Eritrea from approximately 1940 AD. So it's just speaking about these Axumites, these Ethiopians. So from thence I passed above the summits of those mountains to some distance east and went over the Erythrean Sea. And when I was advanced far beyond it, I passed along above the angel Zatil. Okay, there's another angel now, Zatil. Zatil. Virtually unknown. And arrived at the Garden of Righteousness. Okay, Garden of Righteousness. In this garden I beheld, among other trees, some which were numerous and large, and which flourished there. Their fragrance was agreeable and powerful, and their appearance both varied and elegant. The tree of knowledge also was there, of which, if any one eats, he becomes endowed with great wisdom. It was like a species of the tamarind tree, bearing fruit which resembled grapes, extremely fine. And a lot of people do believe this was a grape. Um, when the Nazarene, the Nazarites, are being told not to eat grapes and not to drink wine, 
It's because the forbidden tree is seen as to have resembled grapes. And this comes from the book of uh, Enoch, as we can see. But what's interesting, passed over above the angel Zatil. So I, I'm assuming Zatil is a cherubim because he's guarding the tree of life. But what's very interesting right here is that they're showing us the geographic location, which is east of the Red Sea, which is Africa, which is Ethiopia, Eritrea area, which is the cradle of mankind. And from this, we're speaking of the tree of righteousness or the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which was left in the Garden of Eden. But this is showing us Enoch who is warped into another dimension. When he's doing all of this, he's in heaven, but his heaven is on earth. This is why they're telling us about Eritrea and Aksum and Ethiopia and Africa and the tree uh, and, and the Garden of Eden. So you're seeing all of these trees in heaven have all of their names and stuff like that, but he's in heaven on earth, which is how the two worlds are combined so when you look at this area where the garden of eden is it means that the skin between the worlds is thin it's very very thin like understanding that he is on earth but he is in heaven at the same time is to know that this place this garden was like that there was no separation of god and man and what is being is what will be nothing new under the sun so this is not anything new and he is there this is where he is so i find that really amazing so uh verse four it was like a species of the tamarind tree bearing fruit which resembled grapes extremely fine and its fragrance extended to a considerable distance i exclaimed how beautiful is this tree and how delightful is it uh, is its appearance the holy Raphael, an angel who was with me, answered and said, This is the tree of knowledge, of which thy ancient father and thy aged mother ate, who were before thee, and who, obtaining knowledge, their eyes being opened, and knowing themselves to be naked, were expelled from the garden. So, the garden east of the Red Sea, Africa. From thence I went on towards the extremities of the earth, where I saw large beasts different from each other and birds various in their countenances and forms as well as notes of different sounds to the east of these beasts i perceived the extremities of the earth where heaven ceased the gates of heaven stood open and i beheld the celestial stars come forth i numbered them as they proceeded out of the gate and wrote them all down as they came out one by one according to their number I wrote down their names, altogether their names and their seasons, as the angel Uriel, who was with me, pointed them out to me. He showed them all to me and wrote down an account of them. He also wrote down for me their names, their regulations, and their operations. So this is astrology. So he learned astrology. Interesting. But he said he went to the extremities of the earth where I saw large beasts different from each other and birds various in their countenances and forms as well as with notes of different sounds. So they're like other creatures. They're like, we have animals on earth, but then these ones are different and they are like a whole different species. Like each one is different from the next one. And to the east of this, this, these beasts, I perceived the extremities of the earth, where heaven ceased. The gates of heaven stood open, and I beheld the celestial stars come forth. So the east where the sun rises, these sons of God are coming from the east, and heaven ceased interesting way to put that where heaven ceased i thought it was infinite the gates of heaven stood open there's a gate so who does it like why do they need the gate like a gated community <laughs> it's a gated community yeah so i think these gates 
uh, represent that, like the the worthiness. Like, yeah, if you live in a gated community, it's probably expensive to live there. So it's just like heaven. Like you know, the streets paved with gold is an expensive place. The gates of heaven stood open, and I beheld the celestial stars come forth. I numbered them as they proceeded out of the gate. So here, you're speaking in mathematical terms, numbers, proportions, and stars have proportions. They proceeded out of the gate and wrote them all down. So he wrote this down. So what he wrote down, as they came out one by one according to their number, according to their number, one by one according to their number, I wrote down their names all together. So stars have names their times and their seasons. So they affect times, they affect seasons, as the angel Uriel who was with me pointed them out to me. But this was the angel telling him about the numbers, the times and the seasons of the stars as he was writing this down. And as he was writing this down, remember this book is written for a future generation who would be able to understand the codes in here. He showed them all to me and wrote down an account of them. So Uriel also wrote something. He showed them to me and wrote down an account of them. Wow, so Uriel was also writing. And yeah. Like, no, no, no. You don't you no, know, calculate it like this and then like he like uh helps him out with the math problem and Uriel writes it like yeah this is how you do it yeah continue writing and then Enoch writes the rest like no 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 the five looks like this and then he writes it and then he gives it back like that's how I'm picturing it like Uriel was actually scribbling on the same piece of paper with uh, Enoch so that he gets the accurate information on stars he also wrote down for me their names their regulations and their operations so stars have operations from thence i advanced on towards the north to the extremities of the earth and there i saw a great and glorious wonder at the extremities of the whole earth i saw their heavenly gates opening into heaven three of them distinctly separated the northern winds proceeded from them blowing cold hail frost snow dew and rain from one of the gates they blew mildly but when they blew from the two other gates it was with violence and force they blew over the earth strongly. From thence I went to the extremities of the world eastwards, where I so he's from the east, uh, he's from the east now. He goes westwards, westwards, where I perceived three gates open, as I had seen in the north. The gates and passages through them being of equal magnitude. Okay, then I proceeded to the extremities of the earth southwards where I saw three gates open to the south from which issued dew, rain, and wind. From thence I went to the extremities of heaven towards where I saw three. Oh yeah, the east is where like the sun rises. This is where you were seeing the stars. And the north, like the north and the south, I think these are like trade winds. Um, yeah, and then this is dew, rain, and wind again. From thence I went to the extremities of heaven eastwards. There I saw three heavenly gates open to the east, which had smaller gates within them. Through each of these small gates the stars of heaven passed on and proceeded towards the west by a path which was seen by them, and that at every period of their appearance. Then I beheld them. I blessed every time in which they appeared. I blessed the Lord of glory, who had made these great and splendid signs, that they might display the magnificence of his works to angels and to the souls of men. Wow! And that these might glorify all his works and operations, might see the effect of his power, might glorify the great labor of his hands and bless him forever. This is great. Like, so you're seeing these stars. But for me, like, yeah, what do you think here? And, um... I'm seeing that he is explaining something that feels to me like a flat earth. He just went east, west, and north, south. And he's saying, like, this is where heaven ends. And the, there's a gate right at the edge of the world. 
So he went to that edge into into the to the east where he saw stars, and these stars he sees them moving over the earth on top, while the earth is flat and the and they're moving over the dome or their domain or their dominion, and this affects people's souls and this reflects God's intentions. Okay, so they're displaying the magnificence of the works to angels and to the souls of men. So this is seen by your soul. <laughs> yeah. And it's important to understand that he didn't bless or praise the stars. He, he blessed and praised God. And this is the understanding we get from Egypt. When we look at the Sphinx, it was because of the eastern, it, it was facing, facing the eastern node, which was representing the birth of the Leo or the entering of the Leo. And uh, if we look in the Bible as well, we understand that um, in the time of Moses, they were in Taurus, which is the bull, which is what they were worshipping, the bull. And um, in the time of Jesus, it was the fish, which is Pisces, fishers of men. And as we move along, we're now in Aquarius, which is air and water. So, yeah, these are stars, star signs. So these splendid signs that might display the magnificence of his works to angels and to the souls of men. I think this has a significance that is really far-reaching, but not understood very clearly. Because when we read in the first part, we saw that these evil spirits were also teaching the sons of men these arts. So there's an evil application that is possible. But since Uriel is the one who's pointing out the stars and the regulations, it means that he is giving the accurate information. He's actually writing it down himself. But through the fallen ones, they taught their arts to women who um, taught their arts to their giant children. And those giants were using this information against the sons of God or children on the earth. And Uriel taught this to Enoch so that he can teach the children of the earth so that they will be with knowledge. What is also interesting is the brief mention of the Garden of Eden, the tree of life, the tree of knowledge that is giving wisdom. And this wisdom is good and bad at the same time. And here we have uh, astronomy or astrology or whatever is happening in the spheres in the sky. And this is coming from an angelic source. And we already know that God created all of this and said this is good. So when we understand the goodness that God wanted to portray, it is us gaining understanding and substantiating what we already see, perceive, and understand through the past, the future, and the present. All right. No chapter 36. 37. The vision which he saw, the second vision of wisdom which Enoch saw. All right. In fact, I'm going to stop here because this is like um, a bombshell, and I really like the way that this uh, astrology topic just popped up so in the next um, couple of minutes I'm going to update us and then we're going to continue with this awesome book and uh, I hope you're having as much fun as I am so thank you so much for hanging out with me so see you in a gif <laughs>